And now I'd like to introduce my friend, Bill Gormont, a member of the Rotary Club of Greece, New York and a past district governor. He's currently a Zone 32 District International Service Chair mm. Disc Facilitator, as well as his district's International Service Director and Strategic Planning mm. Committee, mm. Committee Chair. He's a representative on Rotary's Council on Legislation, a Rotary um, Leadership Institute faculty member, and is a regular keynote speaker in leadership, vision, and international service events, as well as a breakout session leader at district trainings, district conferences, zone institutes, and Rotary International Conventions. Please join me in welcoming Bill. Thank you, Kiki, and welcome everyone. We know that engaging in projects is at the very core of what it means to be a member of Rotary. And I'm thrilled to be joined by two people today who are no strangers to developing projects and who will share their strategies with you, Carolyn Johnson and Paolo Passini. Both Paolo and Carolyn has served in multiple roles with a depth of experience at club, district, and regional levels. They possess rich technical knowledge in their professional disciplines and are passionate about what they're presenting today. Carolyn, Paolo, and I are not Rotary staff. Just like you, we are regular members of our respective Rotary clubs and have an incredibly strong passion to simply make the world a better place. Carolyn is a past district governor from Yarmouth, Maine, USA. She currently serves as vice chair of the Rotary Foundation's cadre of technical advisors and is the chair of the Basic Education and Literacy Rotary Action Group. Paolo is also a past district governor from Riccioni, Rimini, Italy. He currently serves as district international service chair and the zone coordinator for End Polio Now. This five-part series is designed to support you as you cultivate effective projects that will create a sustainable impact in your community and around the world. These webinars offer tools and strategies to help you plan, find resources for, implement, and evaluate your projects. Of these, of these five uh, segments of the webinar series, Promoting Projects, Tell Your Story, that occurred on March 23rd. Planning a Project, Designing for Results, that is today. And on April 20th, Finding Project Partners and Resources. On May 4th, Measuring Results, Demonstrate Your Impact. And on May 18th, Expanding Reach, Partnering with Youth in Service. If you missed the first webinar presented on March 23rd, you can watch the video recording by using the link in the chat. And we encourage everybody to please register for the other webinars. You can do that simply at rotary.org forward slash webinars. Through our conversation today, we hope to help you, one, understand the importance of starting with a community assessment, two, Develop an effective project plan with a focus on being able to measure your results. And three, identify what's needed to ensure that your project is sustainable. In front of you here, you see a sustainability infographic. How do you plan for sustainability? Let's begin with a definition. Sustainability means different things to different organizations, clearly. For Rotary, it means implementing long-term solutions to local needs that the community can maintain after the project funding ends. The first step here, starting with the community, identifying a need and developing a solution based on the local strengths, values, and culture. Then we look at encouraging local ownership to pioneer lasting improvements. Then training is important. It provides training that provides mm -hmm. local knowledge and begins to instill pride am among the local community members. And then buying local, that stimulates the economy and includes more of the community in the success of the project. And local funding, well, that helps sustain the project over time because if it's important to the local community, it's more likely that the funding will continue. And lastly, developing clear project goals and a plan of a method to measure and collect specific useful data to identify continued project control and success. 
you know, sustainability doesn't just happen. It's a series of intentional thoughts, plans, and actions. Uh, I'd like to go to Carolyn and ask her, how do you plan for sustainability, Carolyn? Thanks, Bill. Sustainability to me really hinges on a long-term commitment that enables a community to develop new habits. By planning thoughtfully to teach them new knowledge and skills and giving them opportunity to practice and do things differently and more effectively and efficiently, and for the community to understand the benefits of the project that we're implementing. When I started working with the Guatemala Literacy Project, we knew that we wanted to get picture books. We wanted to get good children's literature into the classrooms. But the project was more through sustainability than just bringing picture books in the classroom. It was also about developing a culture of reading. We started with the basics, with training on the basics of literacy development and build up teachers' skills over time. We provided multiple training sessions and interspersed those training sessions with model lessons and coaching and feedback going right into the classrooms and working alongside those teachers so that the skills that we were showing them, they really were able to do and implement in their classroom. So at the end of the year, the first year, I went into one teacher's classroom, a first grade teacher, and asked Josefa um, how she was doing with this new implementation, with this new product that we were working with them on. And she said that she was surprised when we started the program because we promised that the first graders would become better readers. And the teachers, she told me, knew that most first graders didn't learn how to read. Josefa was also surprised when we came into their classrooms in between the training sessions, but it showed that, that we were serious about the program and we expected them to be serious as well. She told me that that year, she told me that most years, about half of her class was not promoted onto second grade. Why? Because they hadn't learned to read. But that year, after working with the program, going to the trainings and re receiving the coaching in between, 48 of her 50 first graders were promoted. The teachers had learned that their students could become readers, and they had also learned to believe in the ability, the capability of their young readers. This is really sustainability. No matter where these teachers go in the future, no matter what classroom they're in, they will never turn their backs on their, or never turn back to their old way of teaching. They've changed their belief system about their effectiveness as a teacher and also about the competency of their students. Thank you, Carolyn. You know, I'm reminded of a rotary acronym from several years ago, JET, J-E-T, join leaders, exchange ideas, and take action. And as you listen to Carolyn, you could begin to see how when Rotarians join leaders from the community and exchange ideas, the resulting action can lead to a more sustainable and successful outcome. Paulo is going to share with us how working with the community led to a better, a better project, where an alliance with public service and Rotary innovation made a sustainable impact. Uh, Paulo, over to you. Thank you, Bill. Um, an example. During COVID, many clubs and districts focused their attention towards COVID patients, and it was right, but sometimes we risk to provide goods that actually several hospital or home care services will have in abundance after the first moment of emergency, like oxymeter, thermometer, and so on. The project then was not so useful and sustainable as in a first time seen. So we ask ourselves what we can do in order to meet hidden important needs. Community assessment is the key. We, in this case, we met doctors, nurses, citizens, and of course, the district resources network. That is a list of Rotarians, uh, expert, technical expert in the district. We discovered that the people more at risk were the chronic patients 
and in particular, cardiological patients with implanted devices as the defibrillator. They couldn't go to the medical center in order to monitor their devices, both because the priority was for COVID and for the risk of infection. After consulting the district resources network and involving the specialists of region and public health local unit, we decided to plan a new project called Remote Heart. Building a Wi-Fi network allowing the devices to send Wi-Fi signals to medical center in order to have a monitoring by remote and also monitoring the status of health of single, single patient. Community assessment and district resource network allowed us to plan in a right way our sustainable innovative project. Thank you, Paolo. You know, we've heard from Carolyn and Apollo, and here are some of the main things that, that I take away. You know, how do you apply these two projects? Well, Carolyn described how a project was designed to develop new skills, and then those new skills were embraced and supported and practiced. So they became a habit. And when something becomes a habit, the more frequently you do it, the better you get at it, and the more sustainable it becomes. And Paolo, well, he started with a project idea where Rotarians did not have the expertise, but the Rotarians knew that they were really good at connecting with experts. So they worked with the doctors and listened to the community. And not only did that project get buy-in from the community and the experts, but the effects of the project has the likelihood now for long-term sustainability. The value of a sustainable project outcome is knowing that when the project is complete, you leave to go back home and grant funding ends, that the processes, the equipment, and the trained individuals will be able to continue into the future without further involvement from the project team. Here's an infographic that describes the process of designing effective and successful projects. The first stage, getting started, involves mobilizing your district's resource network and conducting a community needs assessment. This will allow you to set project goals and develop a detailed project plan and budget. The next stage is finding resources that can be accomplished by publicizing your project locally as well as including it internationally with project fairs. The following project is implementing your project, which which occurs when you raise awareness about your work by communicating, asking questions, and then seeking feedback. And the final stage is evaluating and sharing. This happens best when you establish a system to measure and collect meaningful data, and then use that information to promote your project accomplishments along the way. And of course, the submission of that final report is essential to encourage others to identify and work on future projects. You know, this process is a great guide to help you as you're planning your project. I highly recommend reviewing the process on Rotary's new updated webpage at rotary.org forward slash project resources. We'll share this URL with you after the webinar with links to all the resources we mentioned today. Let's look briefly at these four stages. Stage one, getting started. You know, a couple major thoughts on this one. The secret here is to utilize your district resource network, which is simply your district's local expertise, both Rotarians and non-Rotarians. Don't forget about them. They're a rich source in your community. As a district international service chair, it's my role to identify and recruit local experts and mentors who can use their technical knowledge within the seven areas of focus and and their project planning skills to help you with your project. You think of the district resource network as a consulting firm. Rather than spending money on temporary consultants, you can get advice from fellow Rotarians who have been through the process and understand what's needed. And if you have technical skills, folks, or experience, please volunteer to serve on your district's resource network. When you begin planning a project, connect with your district international service chair because we can refer you to those resource experts and mentors in your area and bordering zones. And equally important in this stage, one, is to conduct a community assessment. Please remember that all projects will benefit from a community assessment. 
Now, we all know that global grants require a community assessment. However, all projects, whether they are funded by Rotary or not, can all benefit by a community assessment. Now, this applies to district grants, club projects, as, as well as those efforts funded outside of Rotary by private foundations or community organizations. Now, stage two is finding resources, and Paula will share how the Remote Heart Project team used experts in the district resource network, including the telemedicine renowned experts, Ramanja healthcare doctors, nurses, and how he engaged with club experts and even high risk cardiac patients from the community. Paulo, over to you, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Bill. DRN, uh, District Resources Network, as I said before, really was strategic. So we organized several calls in which participated many experts in IT, in cardiology, in telemedicine. Above all, this last was very useful because it was necessary to understand if, at the state of art, there were tools and equipments that could allow the connection. In the DRN, District Resources Network, also we have experts in other important disciplines like trading, assurance, assurance, etc. After that, we met specialists and technicians of the region and uh, they endorsed the project. Finally, we consulted the directors of cardiology of four hospitals in order to study the internal organization. Currently, there are 165 patients out of 800 potential on testing all the system. And it seems that we hope all goes well. Thanks, Paulo. Now that we've completed stage one of project planning with identifying appropriate district resource network resources and completing a community assessment, and as Paolo just shared with us, stage two of finding resources and funding, Carolyn is now going to provide some insights to stage three of implementing the project and stage four, evaluating and sharing. Carolyn, over to you. So we put all kinds of time and effort into doing the planning so that we're sure that the project is going to be successful. Implementing the project is really the fun part of the work. So step one when we implement is to remember to communicate and seek feedback and to intentionally set up feedback loops among the different constituents that the, pro the project works with. So in our case, going back to teachers after each of the trainings and asking them, how did it go? What was difficult? What's going to be? What do you think is going to be most effective in the classroom? And then after they've started working with these new strategies and they come back to the next, next training, asking them, how did it go? And what was most successful? That asking questions along the way is critically important. And if we run into any kind of, of difficulties, then reaching out to some of the experts through Rotary and other organizations to look for support. This is a great way to involve your cadre of technical advisors or the Rotary Action Groups in, in getting involved in helping you do problem solving. And then lastly, in implementing the project, is to make sure that we raise awareness about the work, our work. Using social media, different messaging platforms, your club website are great ways to, to get the word out to the broader world about our projects, but also making sure that you're raising awareness with other people who need to know. So in our case, having that feedback loop with the Ministry of Education so that they are always aware each step of the way of what we're doing, how we're doing it, and the successes that we're gaining. Thanks, Carolyn. Now let's turn our attention to community assessments. You know, what is a community assessment? How does the community assessment help you plan for a sustainable project? Well, let's first talk about what is a community assessment. It's simply a systematic way of identifying the needs and resources of a community by gathering statistical data, soliciting perspectives of community members, and collecting information about service providers and other community resources. Well, okay, but how do you do a community assessment? Well, why do it, I should say? Well, it allows you to assess the strengths, weaknesses, the needs, and the assets of the community that you plan to help. Rotary requires a community assessment in their global grant application, but as I spoke about a few moments ago, 
this shouldn't be limited to global grants. Well, how is a community assessment done? Well, some of the methods typically include community meetings, asset inventories, surveys, interviews, focus groups. You know, these methods are just a few that are used to get a thorough understanding of an issue by listening to the diverse perspectives involving different groups of people in the community, the men and women, elders and youth, leaders and marginalized community members, doctors, first responders, and seriously, the list goes on. You know, once you've completed the assessment, you can then choose a suitable goal and design a project that you can use to, to achieve that. When a community assessment is performed, you've laid the groundwork for making lasting improvements in the lives of the community, of the community members. We would like to show a video of Juliana Corridor Gonzalez from Colombia. She is currently serving as the Cadre Regional Organizer for Latin America. She's speaking about her project expertise and sustainable impact she's enjoyed by studying the needs of the community as she embraced and included within the local community. She found that the project empowered people by building alliances with existing organizations and creating new supportive groups. Here's Juliana. Para asegurar que un proyecto de subvención global sea sostenible, es clave el involucramiento de la comunidad beneficiaria desde un comienzo a través de un completo estudio de sus necesidades. También es importante considerar la participación de los entes representativos locales en el proyecto, así como la adquisición de insumos en la misma área y asegurar a través de alianzas interinstitucionales fuentes de financiamiento que garanticen su continuidad una vez se inviertan totalmente los fondos de la subvención. Asimismo, la creación y consolidación de grupos de Rotary para fomento de la comunidad es una estrategia muy importante para generar un sentimiento de propiedad del proyecto y la mejor oportunidad de potencializar su propio liderazgo a largo plazo en beneficio de la comunidad. Un factor fundamental de los proyectos de subvenciones globales es empoderar a la comunidad, no solo para que el proyecto sea exitoso y tenga continuidad, sino para potenciar su acción colectiva e incrementar su calidad de vida, permitiendo tanto a nivel individual como colectivo la movilización de recursos, capacidades, liderazgo y que puedan llegar a ser agentes de su propio desarrollo, esto es, enseñar a pescar. Establecer metas medibles y cuantificables durante la planificación del proyecto permitirá monitorear adecuadamente y de manera continua los avances, frutos y resultados de este y dará la oportunidad de mejorar o corregir durante la marcha y garantizar el éxito del proyecto a mediano y largo plazo, asegurando una, un alto impacto, lo cual realmente es una prioridad en el plan de acción de Rotary. El estudio de necesidades de la comunidad es un punto crítico para el éxito de un proyecto, ya que escuchando a los beneficiarios conoceremos cuáles son sus necesidades reales y muy a menudo las mismas comunidades saben cómo resolver sus propios problemas y cuentan con recursos y habilidades valiosas para este propósito, pero no reconocen o no saben cómo hacerlo. Cuando se estudia la comunidad, también se detecta qué recursos se pueden tener a disposición para llevar a cabo un proyecto eficiente. Me refiero a experiencia, habilidades, conocimientos, recursos técnicos, económicos, tecnológicos, organizacionales, etc. Durante el estudio también se logra fortalecer los lazos de confianza entre los rotarios y la comunidad. Se fomenta el liderazgo y el empoderamiento de los beneficiarios para impulsar su propio cambio y se contribuye muy positivamente con la imagen pública de Rotary. Así como es importante el empoderamiento de la comunidad, la participación y el liderazgo de los rotarios en los proyectos de servicio es fundamental, al ser los rostros visibles de nuestra organización. Los socios rotarios pueden involucrarse en los diversos escenarios, en las diferentes etapas de desarrollo del proyecto, siendo muy valiosa su participación en los procesos de capacitación, gestión de alianzas estratégicas y fomento del conocimiento sobre Rotary. Cuando la comunidad está cerca de los rotarios, se genera un ambiente de confianza y transparencia que sin duda contribuirá a la sostenibilidad del proyecto. Y también es una gran oportunidad para atraer nuevos socios a nuestros clubes. As you just heard from Juliana, building alliances with existing organizations and creating new supportive groups can launch projects to, to just great success. Now let's go back to our panel and get their perspectives. Paulo, How did the community assessment help you plan for a sustainable project? Yes, um, it's important to say that money is not the essential thing. The first thing we have 
to ask ourselves is, is this the real need? Is this project the solution for the long run? Community assessment is the key of the sustainable project, not only because you can be aware of the real needs of the community itself, but also you can find subjects really interested to support it and to be a partner. For example, to build the project Remote Heart, you can see in the slide above five brands, uh, uh, different brands that speak different language, and uh, on the left, uh, uh, four different uh, medical center. In the center, we have the patients that need to have monitoring, and we can, in the cloud, uh, translate all the si signals to go to the hospitals. And this is the core of the project Remote Heart. And we met local clubs, citizens and professionals, and also regional public institutions on a decisive role of the district uh, resources network. We had definitive information, but at the same time, a real partnership. In this particular case, we was lucky because in the DRN, District Resources Network, we have an expert in telemedicine at highest level who guided the development for the, of the project. Moreover, we met officers and professionals of local and regional health services involved in health and IT services. Lastly, we, we met citizens, the Patients Association, that told us their problems in order to monitor their devices. An issue really of key importance for their life. All that meetings provided us an incredible source of information for the sustainability of the entire project. Thanks, Paolo. Carolyn, your project was so much different than Paolo's but still related in a way. In your fields of expertise, how does a community assessment help you plan for a sustainable project? In doing a community assessment, it's really important, absolutely essential, that we don't jump to conclusions and go in and identify it, what we see as a need and identify the solution before we've really taken time to gather our information. The Rotary Uganda Cancer Center was started when my friend PDG Stephen M. Wanje held a forum of business leaders to identify the needs in their community and to ask community leaders where Rotarians might make a difference. Cancer treatment was at the top of all their lists. The first priority was getting the building constructed and Rotarians and those business partners raised funds to build the cancer clinic. Then consideration was given to a global grant to, to acquire the furnishings and the equipment to go into the clinic. But through conversations with nurses and patients and family members, the community assessment began to show that the real need was more than just a building and the equipment. It was about developing an effective process for how to work with patients. So a vocational training team was developed and the vocational training team, the VTT, emphasized shared, emphasized shared leadership, breaking down barriers to create high functioning teams, creating efficient systems and shared responsibilities. And in the end, it was that VTT who really created a new culture of caring at the hospital among its staff. Through focused community assessment, we were able to identify the what, what was needed was the cancer center and more access to cancer treatment. The how, how that would be addressed through that new fully furnished facility. But more importantly, the question became a deeper why, why were we doing this? And the why was better patient care. I'm very pleased that after eight years of the Rotary Cancer Center being in, in effect, these patient care teams are still growing, going strong because we paid attention, Rotarians paid attention to creating a robust community assessment to really identify the underlying needs. Thank you, Carolyn. 
in in Paulo's project, it was necessary to assure that the project actually met the need of the beneficiaries, not a project outcome that you think they need. Because if they don't need it, they won't use it and life will continue unchanged. The community assessment also provided valuable information for sourcing necessary services and expertise from unexpected organizations and people. And then Carolyn, after eight years, this project is still running. It is sustainable. You know, the project that was essential not to jump to a conclusion about methods to serve the need. Meeting with the patients helped get a better understanding of the need. And then the emphasis became more about how they practice medicine rather than what medicine to practice. You know, when we look at the benefits of a well-planned project, uh, it's important to take a, a look into that, into that really as well. Some of the obvious considerations are being able to do more with the available resources by avoiding wasteful actions or processes, reaching the end of a project more quickly. And there are other less tangible benefits that can be even more profound and important. Carolyn, what are a few of the benefits of a well-planned project that you've experienced? Well-planned projects lead to effective, sustainable projects that will continue to provide benefit long after the funding is completed. Well-planned projects also have greater impact, realizing that the sum of the parts is are greater than the whole, that the community is engaged and has learned something about itself and its own competency. We can implement far more complex and far-reaching projects when, they, when we do our planning in advance. And a well-planned project is something that will enhance Rotary's image. We demonstrate that Rotary is a dependable partner and a worthy ally and an effective change agent. I love this project. It's a fairly new one called the Page Pel, and it's a project in the city of Pelotas, Brazil, that was developed to support people with Down syndrome. Rotarians facilitated the planning and the project implementation by working with a small parent organization, a Pajpel, who was seeking support for their children so that differently abled people could participate more fully in the community. The project involves six Rotary clubs in the city who have developed a strong partnerships with these families. Rotary also collaborated with the local government who was able to donate land for a therapy center for the students. They worked with the business community who used tax credits to pay for the building's construction and the local teaching college at the university who will use this center for teaching internships. Along the way, a really wonderful thing happened. The local professional football team learned about a Pajpel and Rotary and the team has since adopted these Downs children. The kids are invited and introduced at every home game and what a thrill it is for them and what a great opportunity for the community to learn about these special needs students. Truly, this has become a movement throughout the community to accept and embrace people with disabilities. Effective project planning shows that Rotarians don't have to be the experts, but through our networking, we are great at connecting the experts to achieve excellent results. Thank you, Carolyn. Folks, I don't know if you noticed the smile on Carolyn's face as she was talking through this. It's the impact to us as practitioners that allows us all, all of those that are on this call today, to truly make a difference. As Carolyn just shared, we don't often consider the emotional impact and social excitement that we produce through successful projects, not in not only in the community, but, not, but honestly in ourselves as well. Apollo, your project involved a very large geographical region. What benefits did you discover by having this well-planned project? Yes. One of the factors that obliged us to well-plan the project is that it was a big project that involved a large community. From the very start, our aim was to be protagonist in the life of the community by means of a project spread in a whole subregion. Subregion in this case in Italy is in the middle of Italy, uh, subregion Romagna that has uh, 1 million 200,000 people inhabitants. So we couldn't fail. 
and I identified three main three main points uh, of benefits. The first one, besides the undoubtedly benefits of the project itself, we have had the opportunity to involve members, Rotarians that not often participated in, in club life because the project was judged particularly relevant. We have had the possibility to broaden the relationships among more 16 clubs, and that circumstance determined long-lasting relationships and new occasion of project. The second, the involvement of public institutions is a key factor for other important and big projects. And for example, the provision of ultrasound probes for all over the region funded by USAID. This has received a large echo from the media, TV, news, newspaper, web pages, and so on. Lastly, besides public institutions, we have strengthened relationship with association of professionals and citizens so that the relevance of Rotary in our community made really an important step ahead. Thanks a lot, Paolo. Well, Carolyn's project allowed the community to discover that they were way more resilient and capable than they had ever imagined. And Paolo's project, it allowed 16 Rotary clubs to work together on a common goal. You know, they felt the responsibility to the community but that turned into accountability. Did you hear Paulo say that they they had to get this done? They were committed. That translated to them as a group partnering with the public health sector. And this translated even beyond this project, working together to address other issues. Man, I mean, there is so much going on. Uh, it, it, you can tell Paulo and Carolyn uh, are, are super committed, just as all the other discs in this world are. But with that said, we'd like to turn our attention to attendee questions. You know, as excited as we are, we know you are excited too. Now, some of these questions were submitted in advance and some have come in during the webinar. You can use the chat function, please, to submit your questions now. And uh, Kiki is going to moderate this for us. And uh, so, Kiki, if you can see some uh, questions coming in, we're going to turn this over to you. Thanks, Bill. Um, we've got some great questions coming in. Um, I'm seeing this one. Uh, we started working on a project with schools. The initial thought was that they needed books. How do we ensure we address the real needs? And Carolyn, with your um, excellent background with the cadre and action groups in basic education and literacy. I'll turn this over to you. Sure. Um, it all goes back to the community assessment and, and going back to ask questions and digging deeper. Um, talking with teachers and spending time in classrooms to see how instruction really occurs. Uh, finding out about the curriculum and what are the topics that are addressed at each grade level so that we can match if the real need is books or part of the need is books, so we can match those books to the curriculum and the topics that the teachers are expected to teach, making sure that books um, are in the language of the local community as well. Um, asking questions like, is there a library in a school? And how can teachers and children assess the, those library materials? Um, what kind of professional development is offered for the teachers, either through the government or other nonprofit organizations in the area? And what does that look like? And I would also add that books is certainly one thing that a lot of Rotarians um, like to get involved in and should get involved in in projects. But ask similar kinds of questions if you're thinking of working with technology and computers in classrooms and schools. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, I see another question about alliances and partnerships. And I think, uh, Paolo, I'll hand this over to you with the partnership you were able to build with um, a municipal and government and community members. And the question is, how do you build partnerships to ensure sustainability in your projects? Yes. And the consideration is, if it's just Rotary, 
the project is not uh, sustainable. Above all, in the big project, it is necessary to consider alliances from the very start, both for funding or for requirements, tangible or intangible. For example, in Remoth Heart, our partnership were numerous, internal and external. At internal level, of course, many clubs, the district resources network. At external level, public health services, professional, and so on. While district resources network help us to structure the plan and uh, advising about the technical requirements, clubs and um, district raise funds in order to finance hardware and software the project. Public services provide the implantable devices, the maintenance, and the replacement for devices with failures. Rotary and external partners financed different stages of training. Alliances are strategic and should be always embedded in the plan for the first man moment. Thank you, Paolo. And I'm getting another question in. Bill, I think this one is for you with your experience with uh, the many projects in your zone mm. and district. Who can help me with community assessments? It's a good beginning question. Oh, oh boy, it, uh, it, 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 it sure is. Uh, you know, they're everywhere. All these, all these connections are, are just there. If you've ever bought a new car, you look and you say, gee, you know, I want a new car. Um, let, let's get a white one because, you know, we haven't had one and there's not many out there until you buy that new white car. And then you realize there are so many white cars out there. The same thing's true with this. When you have when you have the ability to begin looking for experts within your region, they are absolutely everywhere. You have the technical expertise that's sitting there with Rotary's seven areas of focus. And you've got people that have worked on Rotary grants. You have the international service chairs, not just in your in your uh, club and or district, but also in the zones bordering you. You know, you've got Rotary alumni, you have community members, and and there's professionals from other organizations, not just Rotary who are eager to support projects that help people. You know, there's outstanding resources, seriously, just everywhere. And finding international partners, uh, honestly, just as easy. You can use publications online. Don't forget the Rotary Magazine. The District Resource Network mentors for experts from within Rotary and these these community partner uh, uh, organizations, they can help you with a with a super strong uh, super strong project. Uh, the hosts, don't forget the hosts. I mean, there's resources there right on the ground where this project's going to take place, and and uh, you know they're eager to help too. And the more they help, the more sustainable. Seriously, this this project will become. You know, and if it's a global grant, please reach out to your Rotary Grants officers, your area focus managers, community assessment tools and guides are there for you. How do you get started? Please contact your district international service chair. We are there for you. Man, that was a long answer, Kiki, but man, I get so excited about this stuff. Oh boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I also wanted to add a couple notes um, that are... Um, Rotary Action Group members, as well as our cadre members, mm. uh, uh, are two of Rotary's uh, best project planning resources. Many times they're in your district resource network, but you certainly can reach out to them through your uh, district resource network or your DISC, but they are excellent to help you with community assessments. Mm. And I'm just going to give a really quick example of a DISC and a cadre member in Texas who was starting with a community assessment and turned to their local university, um, specifically to a school of uh, graduate students and social work who helped them with community assessments. So many, many resources out there. Um, I see another question coming in. Oh, this one's a good one. Um, Carolyn, I'm gonna turn this over to you. 
what's the number one reason projects fail? Lots of reasons, unfortunately. Uh, but my primary response is that someone jumped to a conclusion, jumped into a project, knowing the solution before they started asking questions. Um, and really following up on that, that the project was done for the community rather than with the community. And the Rotarians involved, the people involved, um, really overlook the opportunities to develop leadership and, and develop the capacity within the community to take this on as their own. Thanks, Carol. Uh, Carolyn, and I didn't mean to put you on the spot with uh, telling us why you thought projects fail. Um, I have another question coming in about community assessments, Bill. I'm going to turn it over to you. How do you ensure uh, that all voices are heard during community assessments? Wow, uh, that's really important. And I, I'm going to connect with what with what Carolyn just said. You know, don't go into a project with a preconceived notion of how that project should be done and what the outcome is that you perceive you know remain open-minded don't presume that you know what the community needs um, you know choose your participants carefully consider the makeup of the community as i had spoken about before to make sure that you include all segments you know include a diverse cross-section of of relevant groups you know uh, 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 like gender and age and uh, ethnicity, you know, religious uh, and income levels and vocations. You know, some of the people that are overlooked most generally are the marginalized groups. Uh, they don't get the recognition they should in many cases. You know, women, young people, the elderly, um, ethnic minorities. You know, please keep the community social dynamics in mind and um, provide, a, provide a good forum for them where they'll feel comfortable sharing their views you know consider yourself an outsider even even if the community that you want to work with or have been asked to work with is local you know find find some maybe um uh, well well connected individuals or groups or organizations that might be able to introduce you to some of these uh what i might call stakeholders that would allow you to to get the real answers, you know, and don't promise a project outcome before you decide to move forward. You know, if you do that, it undermines this whole process. And uh, in the case of grant funded activities, uh, please don't get started on it before you have approval. Make sure that you uh, include all the participants in all aspects of this of this project. Plan well and execute uh, fervently. <laughs> that was a great question, Kiki. Thanks for asking that, uh, finding that there in the chat. Thanks, Bill. I uh, have another question and Paolo, I'm going to turn it over to you. Who should perform the community assessment? Ah, fortunately, we have uh, uh, an important, very important tool. Uh, this is uh, community assessment tools that we can be download from my rotary that contains uh, a lot of methods and examples. In the case of the project Remote Art, the first natural action was to inv involve the Rotarians that live in and close to the community. Rotarians, who as professionals, know very well situation and circumstances. They know the cultural background and are aware of the needs that should be met daily, daily. And secondly, each project has its specific background and characteristic. So we should not be unyielding, but flexible and choose the appropriate tools accordingly to the project we want to carry out. In the remote heart project, for example, we utilize the interview to the managers and the professionals, doctors and nurses, because the patients are not at the time the sufficient awareness of their own necessities due to the high organizational and technical content of the specific issue. Subsequently, it was explained to the patient the benefit 
of the project and they became proactive and could protagonist just because they understood the importance and the benefit for their their health that uh, uh, lastly really it is important to have many many actors in this uh, process uh, professionals rotarians uh, the patient itself I think that it is a mosaic that was uh, that's important to compose to perform the community assessment. Hmm. Great, thank you, Paolo. I have we have time for one more question, and I've been getting kind of a combo question. How do I contact my district international service chair, the DISC? And I suggest you look to your own district's website um, to find the district. District governor appoints the district international service chair. We also included a link in the chat. Another, the, the combination question was, how do I get in touch with um, a, a, a Rotary Action Group member? We have 27 Rotary Action Group uh, members. Rotary, wait, 27 Rotary Action Groups with chairs specifically uh, for these groups in the in Rotary's areas of focus. There's links that we included. Reach out to them. Also reach out to your district resource network members. And the other question was, how do I find my cadre members? And Carolyn, I'm going to turn that over to you. The easiest way to find cadre members is to get in touch with us at Rotary office. It's cadre at rotary.org. And we can send a list of, of cadre members in a particular area of focus or look for the cadre members in your particular region where you're working or for an international partner where you live. Um, but the easiest way is, is cadre at rotary.org. Thanks, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Kiki, for uh, leading us through that. Boy, we are so excited. We would love to be on here for another hour or two uh, to be able to share with you. But the time is getting short. We we want to make sure that we that we hear from you in terms of how are you going to take action. So for the next, uh, say, 15 seconds or so as a wrap up, we'd love for you to tell us in the chat one action that you will take as a result of this webinar. Just just one thing. Make it simple. Make it quick. Get it in there. Kiki's going to be monitoring this and take a real quick peek at it and we'll share a few of these. Great. I'm seeing um, suggestion. I'm seeing uh, submissions. I'm going to train my club members. I'm going to go to Rotary's Learning Center to check out all these great resources. I'm going to get in touch with cadre members, my district international service chair. I'm definitely going to start with a community assessment. I'm going to start networking. I'm going to contact a foreign club. I'm going to reach out to Rotary Community Corps. Assessment document, yay. Contact my local university, social education to determine the needs of the community. I just saw one fly by. It says, it says discover the real need. I love it. <laughs> Well, that's great. Hey, Kiki, thanks for taking a, a, a blinding uh, rush through those and uh, so many more that I saw and they're continue to come in. Um, here you see the resources. Now, these resources that we've chatted about today, you can see some of them here. Uh, but additionally, you will receive a follow-up email, as Kiki said at the top of this uh, event today, with today's video recording, along with links to all of the resources that uh, Paulo and Carolyn, I, Kiki, uh, have uh, have shared have shared with you. We would we would love to just say. Thank you. You know, uh, we have, uh, geez, we had nearly uh, 500 people joining us today. We want to thank you so very much for all of you giving your precious time to to pick up additional knowledge. I'd like to thank Kiki for putting this this webinar together into our amazing panelists, Carolyn and Paulo. I'm so thrilled to call them friends and so uh, anxious to use them again as colleagues as we move forward with the, with their dedication and their passion as we all help uh, as we all continue to help others.
And a giant thank you uh, for the assistance of the many Rotary staff members behind the scenes today working to ensure that this webinar ran smoothly. Bless you. Uh, and, and we hope that you'll join us for this third webinar in this five-part series, Finding Project Partners and Resources. That will occur on April 20th. Please make sure that you register for these at rotary.org forward slash webinars. So for all of us here on this webinar today, we, uh, we, uh, we, sh we share with you, please be well, please travel safely and continue to, as Jennifer's been telling us all year, imagine Rotary. Enjoy your day. Bye now. <laughs>